Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, and this is Car Chronicles. How is everyone doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you guys. You guys ready? Well, let's do this. First of all, allow me to say that um, I have been looking for new avenues of going live. And so last night I had this great conversation with my sister Tasha and, of course, my mom, Apostle Sadler. And we were talking about the TikTok lives. And um, I'm going to do TikTok lives. I'm going to I probably do one either today or maybe later on today or maybe later on this week. And it'll be my first live on TikTok. Let me see how it goes. And I hope you guys come in and support. So those of you that are on YouTube, those of you that are on Facebook, those of you that are on Instagram, you go over to TikTok. I'll let you know when I go live, um, come over to TikTok to my live. And some of you like, you know, there are some people that have their preferences as to what they like. If you're a TikToker, you're a TikToker. If you're a Facebooker, you are a Facebooker. If you are a YouTuber, you are a YouTuber. Sometimes you got to kind of get out your comfort zone and try something new, just like I'm going to do. I'm going to try something new. So you guys be gentle with me. But let's get on to the topic. Ready? Let's do it. As you guys know, I am a trauma professional. And it's not the fact that I love trauma. I don't love trauma. I love being there to help people in the midst of their trauma. There's something about abnormal psychology, and it's not the abnorm- abnormality of the psychology, meaning the like the narcissist, you know, narcissistic personality disorder is fascinating. But at the same time, I much rather deal with the victims and the survivors of narcissist abuse, domestic violence survivor, because I love to bring people hope. I like to see people smile, you know, bring them, a, give them some humor, you know, even if the situation is bad. Some of you have come from a long line, a long history of trauma. You know, a lot of you have come from abuse, neglect, rejection. Some of you, you know, you have attachment issues. Some of you that were born into families of narcissists, if your mother was a narcissist, father was a narcissist, especially those of you that have mothers that are narcissists, you have attachment issues because there wasn't a real bond between you and the mother. You know, for some mothers, narcissist mothers, and I've watched this many a times, they love being pregnant because of the attention that they get. But when the responsibility of the baby comes, it's annoying to them. You know, it is they're kind of neglectful. You know, as long as the baby is little and needy, you know, the baby, because everyone's giving the attention, it's fine. But as soon as that baby begins to become a little more independent, you know, like walking or talking, you know, they hurry up and have another baby because they want that feeling, you know, that they get from people's attention and then that feeling of that baby being needy. But there's no true bond between the mother and that child. There is no real bond. Now, you as children of the narcissist, you know, you you love your mothers, you love your fathers, you just didn't know what they were. Then when you realize what they were, you begin to realize that there was no real connection. And it took a while because that's the hardest thing for a person to have to come into um, acceptance of is that my mother and my father can't truly love because they don't have the capacity to do so you know what they think love is love is not and so that's why some of your children are asking you but does my daddy love me but does my mommy love me now some of you guys that pop off at the mouth and you're all over consumed about how angry you are and you got to say this and i'm gonna keep it real and i'm gonna tell the truth and i'm not gonna lie to my children's you know whatever you say you you got to some of y'all just I hate to say the word ignorant because ignorant does not mean stupid. Ignorant just means lacking knowledge because what you're doing is you're causing a whole nother injury to your kids. You're supposed to be the parent that loves and adores your children when you know that you came out of a narcissistic relationship. And as, and when you have children, it's not about you anymore, you know, but it's about your children and you don't have to, I'm going to keep it real and tell the truth. Okay. You have that opportunity to change the trajectory in their life. You're either going to wound them some more because of what you know and what you're going to tell them, you know, or you're going to have to learn to articulate and explain to your children without tearing your children down. Because either number one, you're going to create another narcissist. Number two, you're going to create a very wounded child that's going to grow up feeling neglected and rejected. There's nothing wrong with you telling that child your father or your mother loves you the best way they know how. And for some of them, you know, you have to let them know, you know, in their mind, they think 
throwing money at you is love. And you know love is more than just throwing money at you. You guys know that, you know, you can't even remember some of the gifts that you got growing up. But what you can remember, and I said this before, what you can remember is how grandma let you lick out of the batter bowl, you know, when she made a cake. How grandma used to sit down and play or talk to you. How grandma used to um, give you life lessons. How grandma just spent time with you watching, like my grandmother watched Animal Kingdom. So we sat there and watched Animal Kingdom while she peeled the orange for me. You know, certain things, but some of you guys pop up the mouth and injure your children even more. You know, you making it worse. And really what you're doing is, is you're not pulling your kids to you. You're pushing your kids away into the hands of the abuser and the hands of abusers. You're setting your child up. Even nowadays, you know, this world is not like it used to be at one point in time. It's not safe out here in these streets, you know, when it comes to kids. You got these, you know, you got child trafficking. You got uh, uh, human trafficking out there. You're setting your child up where they're desperate for attention, where they're desperate for love, where they're desperate for, for touch. I told you guys in one of my videos, that, you know, um, this level level three or level four sex offender told, uh, you know, told the public and they were doing an interview and he told them, you know, what he does to see whether that child is a good victim. If they lean into the touch, he touches their back. And if they lean into the touch, he knows that they're desperate for touch. They're desperate for, you know, uh, some attention. And that's how he he um, he picked his victims. And some of you guys, because you got to keep it real. You guys remember, um, um, who was it, David Chappelle, when keeping it real goes wrong? Yeah, some of you guys are keeping it real. But what you're doing is you're keeping your kids hurt. You're keeping your kids traumatized. You're keeping your kids in this cycle of generational abuse by making sure you keep it real. Your mom or dad, they love you the best way they know how, you know, and they really don't know how to love. They think that love is da 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 and then you address the behavior. You know, they think love is giving you money. They think love is this. They think love is that. Now, one thing that I'm going to tell you is don't you don't you let listen, don't be afraid to address some real life issues. Love is not, you know, an unclean touch or a a violation or a uh, unauthorized touch. That's why I told you guys, make sure you teach them good touch versus bad touch. You can go on YouTube, they have all that stuff on there. Good touch versus bad touch. Talking to your children, you know, to uh, to protect them against sexual or predators, period. Sexual predators or predators. You know, and they got videos out there where you can teach your children how to stay safe. You know, uh, good touch versus... But even they got videos where you even can talk to them about parents, you know, and boundaries. You know, so you can't just, you, hey, keeping it real going wrong. You can't just say what you want to say when you're kids. You have to be more sensitive. And some of you guys have to learn to, I said it before. That was a long pause because I was trying to pause the video so I can think of what I was going to say. I said it before. Shut up. Shut up. Because some of you guys talk too doggone much. You talk too much. You got to have the last word in. Listen, one of the things you have to learn, for those of you that don't have any children with the narcissist, Okay, but two wrongs don't make a right. You know, you don't want to, the one thing you don't want to do is fight a narcissist. You don't fight fire with fire. You don't bring water to a grease fire. You know, you, you got to be wiser than that you being set up for a reaction. And so you got to have the last word in. So if they say something, you got to pop off at the mouth and say something back. You know, that's not always the case. A lot of times you have to learn to swallow your own pride, especially when there are children involved. When there are children involved, sometimes you have to swallow your pride, let them talk. One thing I have learned is that narcissist I was with is a cerebral. Now, he is he is somatic, very somatic as well, but he started off as cerebral, so he's very smart. He's not wise. He has no wisdom at all, but he's smart, you know, when it comes to manipulating. And it's not smart to manipulate. He's a, he's a great manipulator. The boy is bad when it comes to manipulation. The boy is bad when it comes to manipulating your emotion, people's emotion to getting what he wants. He knows how to manipulate. He understands not all of it, but he understands the human nature of, of people that are hurting. You know, so he's smart, you know, smart wise, not street wise, but he's smart and he's very manipulative. But he has no, absolutely no wisdom. And so I have to be wise enough to know, because if I say the wrong thing, a lot of times he talks and talks and talks. And most of the narcissists talk because they want you to fill in the gaps. See, that's how they get the information from you. Talk so that you can correct and give them the information that they're looking for. That's why they give you false information. Sometimes you just have to, uh-huh, okay, uh-huh. You don't have to respond. You don't have to fill in the gaps because you're uncomfortable. Just be quiet. Because one thing they're going to do when they get you back, they go after your kids. Then you're ready to fight.